Hey there, and welcome to the Visioning Masterclass. I am thrilled that you are here. You are in the right place because without a vision, we don't know what direction we're going in in life. The clearer that your vision is, the more behind it you'll be. You'll make your decisions based on that vision and you'll be a lot more purposeful. Plus, you'll be sure, surer to get what you want if you know what it is. You don't go to Amazon and click on random articles. You click on what you want and then you receive it. So the clearer that you are about what your vision is, about where you're going, the better chance you have of receiving it. So just before I start, I want to introduce myself, if you don't know me already, briefly. My name is Neve. I used to call myself a mindset coach. I am, I really firmly believe that mindset is probably 90% of the journey, because if you've got a very strong mindset with determination, courage, resilience, then you're really going to have brilliant skills to get you to where you want to go. But also the very first thing, and this is what I'm most passionate about helping people to do is to leap, to have the courage to be true to yourself, to get clear first on what your truth is, to know what you want, and then to leap to go after it. And that takes courage. And I see myself as a catalyst for taking those leaps and then to help you to get there because it can be destabilizing any kind of change, any kind of transformation requires courage, requires strength, requires focus. There will be obstacles along the way. And I love to help my clients to navigate those obstacles and to get to where you want to go. So let's get clear about where that place is with your vision. Okay, so pen and paper. If you don't have it already, just hit pause and get your pen and paper. And the three areas that I'm going to share about are health, wealth, and relationships. They are the three primary areas for growth. And there's lots of subsets of those three areas, but they're the three areas. Actually, I'm going to really zone in on wealth and purpose today. But since health and relationships are so important because just like we are mind, body, and spirit, our health affects our wealth, affects our purpose, and so do our relationships. They're all dependent on each other. You know, if you're having really destructive relationships, you're not going to have the energy and the confidence to go forward with your purpose and your health will be affected. So it's really important that you take care of all of those aspects. So let's dive in first into health. And the way this is going to work is basically you are going to pause the recording to reflect each time on what do I most want for me in my health. Now, health is physical health, mental health, and spiritual health. So let's start first with physical health. What is it that you most want in that area for you? So allow yourself to think, allow yourself to dream big, by the way, you know, that voice that says, yeah, but little old me, I couldn't do that, or weak me, or me that's not that healthy, couldn't achieve that. I want you to just drop that voice, get rid of it, that devil on your shoulder for this masterclass. And trust me, whatever's in your heart, whatever you truly, truly want, miracles happen every day for those that really, really want and take the action necessary to make change happen, even change that doctors can't explain through the powers of uh, meditation and manifestation, etc. cetera. Um, so I really want you to write down what you truly want for you in the area of physical health. So most of us have some kind of an ailment, some chronic, some very serious and others just irritating. So whatever it is, Imagine yourself in full health. So think about ideally what I want for me is, and don't write down, <laughs> don't just said don't write down, but so write down what you want, what you desire rather than what you don't want. Turn it into an affirmative, something positive rather than what you don't want. So, and here's another tip, write it in the present tense then you're already in the manifestation process of allowing yourself to feel that unfolding. I am in perfect health. You can write all of this masterclass, you can write down as affirmations, if you like. That would be a really powerful way to approach it. 
I'm super healthy. My my arms are super healthy or, you know, uh, my, because for me, I'm just thinking I have a little bit of tendonitis. So my, my arms are super healthy and I can lift heavy weights with ease and without any pain, for example. So whatever specifically you'd like to create in your life, think about it. Because by the way, this, what you write here and hopefully type up later really is it's going to be your Bible to refer to every day and remind yourself, this is my highest priority in life. These, all of these desires that I've written down here are my highest priority in life. Okay, so if you want to spend longer on physical health, you, the longer you spend on it, the clearer that you get. And you know, the more things that you order, like ordering on Amazon, then where attention goes, energy flows. So attention will go there, okay? Now, I should also say attention should go there, but not in a desperate, desperate, needy way. There is a balance between acceptance of what is and trusting that whatever is showing up is for your highest good or for your, highest, for your, for your growth, for you evolving. So the way I approach it is not to get desperately attached. It's Life is a playground, and, and I'm here to really have fun and feel deep, deep gratitude. That is one of the key secrets to life, to appreciate absolutely everything. If you can increase your appreciation and your gratitude, you're basically going to enjoy life a lot more, right? And you don't need anything in your circumstances to change in order to increase your gratitude. That is a practice. So remember that too. And that might be one really important element. And let's move on to mental health because I think it's most closely linked to mental health. So what is important? What vision do you have for your mental health? Because usually our mental health is affected by um, when the reality that we desire is not showing up or if there's some something stressful in our past or in our present then our mental health is affected. If it's something from our past that we have not yet processed, if we've not integrated and processed it, then that's going to affect our mental and our physical health, actually. But think about for your mental health, what ideally do you want to be experiencing? So gratitude will be the number one thing to help you improve your mental health because you can't feel grateful and at the same time in lack you know, poor mental health is, there's going to be a strong lack mentality there. I'm lacking this. I'm lacking that. This isn't good enough. I'm not, it's, it's lack thoughts as opposed to abundance thoughts. Gratitude is linked to abundance. So the more gratitude you have, the more abundant you're going to feel, the more emotionally and spiritually abundant you're going to feel no matter what your bank account looks like. So the more gratitude that you can experience, I can tell you there is many people with massive bank balances that do not have a high gratitude levels and are not able to appreciate those things. And there's things like sunrises, sunsets, the moon, the stars, fresh air, all of those things that are free. And when we can deepen our appreciation and nature, all of the things in nature, then we experience more abundance. So that's what I wish for you. That's what has helped me enormously to really work on that. And it definitely impacts my mental health. So think about what you want for you for your mental health. For me also, it's to feel grounded, to feel anchored, to feel at peace. Okay, so physical health, mental health and spiritual health, which is also linked to your mental health, your spiritual health, you know, do you want to have a spiritual practice in your life? Is that important to you? Like meditation, any kind of or religious practice, what kind of a spiritual practice in your ideal vision do you want to have? And think of this also as your higher self, you know, the self that you aspire to be, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the self that you currently are, but, you know, we're, we're always a work in progress and growing and it's which area do you want to grow? Which would you like to have? What would you like to have more of in your life? So look at your spiritual health as well. So that is your health. Now, also related to that, of course, is your diet, what you're eating, your fitness, diet and fitness. 
Yeah, I think just those two. So think about your eating habits in your ideal vision of you. What are your eating habits? What kind of fitness are you doing? Personally, I am a strong believer in strong body, strong mind. So currently I'm doing quite, quite hard workouts for strengthening, strengthening, muscle strengthening, plus cardio. And I am a firm believer that it's essential to have some kind of movement in your life. It, it all, you know, the, the physical body has an impact on our emotional body and on, on our emotions. So for me personally, every day, actually, well, second thing, meditation first, and then some form of a, a workout or sometimes yoga I will do before breakfast. So think about, and what comes later then is your structure, how you want to structure your day. Once you're clear about your vision, and what's important, what your priorities are, then you start to look at, okay, how am I going to plan these into my schedule? Once I'm clear that these things are my highest priority, which I'm going to honor because I am now in the driving seat of my life, not in the passenger seat. Up to now, if you have not had a clear vision, you've been in the passenger seat, kind of just aimlessly going through life. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you choose. But personally, I like to work on growing myself and improving myself and you know I think it's such a gift to be alive let's make the most of it and let's honor that gift by doing our best to take care of our bodies take care of our uh, of every aspect of our lives and and that when we die that we say yes I, I'm proud of you know I really did my best I really really uh, worked hard to do my best in my life and a really good exercise, actually, this will also help your vision, is to imagine your obituary being read out at your funeral. What, how would you like to be described? So you can also look at your character. What kind of a character do you, would you like, what, what, how would you like them to describe you? And then you can think about, ah, yeah, caring, kind, for example, and giving, you know, if those things are important, then write them down, put them in your vision. This is also something that you continue to contribute towards. It's not just right now, you know, more things will come to you afterwards. You're like, oh yes, but that's important to me too. So don't worry, you don't, there's no limit to this. The more things on there, the clearer that it is, the better. And you can ask for as much as you want. There's not a limit. It's not like you can only ask for 50 things. <laughs> no, because you are the one that's going to be creating them, right? It's not like you're asking for them and somebody else out there. Well, there will, there is, I do believe that there is a presence that supports you. It's like lady luck, lady luck follows action. So you look comes to you when you take action and you're already taking action right now by writing down your vision and getting very, very clear about what you want. Okay, so that's your physical health. Let's move to relationships now before we go to wealth and purpose. So relationships, think about what kind, and that really relationships, relationship with self, there's, there's four different uh, aspects to relationships. Let's start with self because your, your character with yourself, yourself is your character, right? and how much you like yourself, how proud you are of yourself, etc. So think, what kind of a relationship do you want to have with yourself? So you can pause as you really reflect on that. And you might look at, you know, what are your values as well? And are you living by your values? Because if you, if you have values of, let's say, honesty and adventure, you know, to re be an adventurer in life, and you're not taking any adventures, then you're not going to have such a great relationship with yourself because you're not honoring your highest values. So get clear about, you know, write down five things that are important to you that you want to live by. Love, connection, gratitude. You know, what do you value most in life? Get really clear about that. And then look at, are you living those? And if not, okay, what steps can you take? Put it on your vision that you aspire to improving and bringing more of into your life. You can, of course, also create a vision board from this and have a visual representation of it to remind you. We think in pictures, so it's, it's wonderful if you can uh, put it on a vision board and put it on your wall. Okay, so that's self. Now, the next one is family. What kind of relationships do you want with your family? 
maybe you want stronger boundaries there. Maybe you want deeper connections there. Think about, you know, if you're a parent, what kind of a relationship you want with your children? What would you like to be more of? More present, more supportive, maybe firmer, tough love? That's a gift to our children too sometimes. So think about your uh, relationships with your family and maybe extended family as well. Again, it's a good exercise to think about when you die and you look back, what, will, what, what, do, you what do you wish you'll be feeling? Will you be saying, yes, I'm really glad that I kept up those, that I fostered those relationships and nurtured those relationships? Or will you <laughs> be saying, I'm really glad that I uh, pulled away from those relationships because they were really, um, like there were some energy vampires in my life that I didn't want there to be anymore. And I'm really glad that I freed myself of those and put up stronger boundaries. No right or wrong here, just your truth, getting clear about what you want for your future vision. Okay, and then your friends. Do you want more friends, less friends, deeper friendships? What kind of a friend do you want to be? That's a really great exercise. And, you know, then attracting people, when you, when you write that down, you know, what kind of a friend do I want to be? You'll attract similar like-minded friends into your life. And, you know, how much do I want to nurture my friendships as well? And finally, the relationship with your significant other, your partner, if you have a significant other. If you've not, then self, that is your, the relationship you're having that, that you're in, it's with yourself. But if you have a significant other in your life, what kind of a relationship do you want with that person? And what do you want to work on there? Maybe letting go of needing them to show up differently than they're showing up. So you give them permission to be free and yourself permission to be free because that's one of the most stressful things is needing somebody to show up differently than they are. You know, maybe you don't see yourself moving forward with that same person and your future vision is without that person and one of the steps will be having the courage to move on from that relationship. So write down what it is that you see for you in your relationships, in your relationship with your significant other. Okay, so good work. We have so far done your health, your physical, your mental, your spiritual health, and we've done relationships, family, friends, self, and significant other. So let's go to the third area, the final area, which is wealth, because basically, it's a necessity in our lives. Apart from air, there's not much else that's free. <laughs> so um, it's, it's not easy to survive. There are some people successfully living off grid, but um, the majority of people need money to survive. Okay, so I'm a firm believer that a lot of people out there are feeling depressed because they're not living their purpose. And, and I know that it's easier said than done. I, I feel very blessed that I am living my purpose, but it's not an easy ride to to choose to take that path because you you don't have a stable income and it, it's really you know if if I'm not well I still need to show up or if I don't my income is affected whereas if you are in a 9 to 5 job for example then you know you don't have that issue so I do understand why people stay in jobs that they're miserable in basically and there's quite a few people out there in that situation and I'm sorry for that if you are one of them but you can always improve a situation so think about what uh, or you can have the courage to leave it or maybe you're about to be made redundant as is the case unfortunately for a lot of people in the world right now so um, whatever it is just choose to see it as a gift choose to see it as something that your soul called in for you in order for you to evolve so you can ask yourself the question, okay, so um, if this is happening for me, if this is, um, and, and by the way, maybe you're really happy with your job and your purpose and fantastic if you are, you can also think about how you can um, even be happier or how you can um, have a greater impact with whatever it is that you are, um, uh, what, what your purpose is. Okay, so, um, but do think if you are not happy with what you're working on, think about, okay, how can I expand from this? Byron Katie, who is somebody who I followed for a long time and worked with and trained with, um, she's the author of a book called Loving What Is and a process called The Work. Um, she says, 
you don't have to go to India to find your guru. You're usually living with them or working with them. So maybe you're in a situation where your boss is a bully, for example. So there's always opportunities for, okay, if my boss is a bully, then I've got to learn strong boundaries, firm communication, or I've got to decide to move on, to have the courage to move on, for example. Anyway, what I want to say here is, um, you decide whether you want to stay where you are, or if you don't, then you look at these things. What am I passionate about? What are my skills? And what is there a market for? It's those three things. What am I passionate about? What am I skilled to do? And what is there a market for? And basically, it's you can make a list, actually. And, you know, okay, what I'm passionate about or what my dream has been since childhood, for example what I am skilled to do, because you might be passionate about becoming an astronaut, but if you haven't done any training, for example, it's it's uh, not worth pursuing, maybe, <laughs> unless, depending how, what age you are. <laughs> if you're young, still go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, you know, being reasonable about, okay, is, is it possible for me to um, pursue this and make money from it? Okay. Okay. So when you find what you really, really want there and you think, okay, there is a market for this. Maybe you have to do some research, reach out to me if you want help with that. I know, for example, in my line of work online, it's growing. Online trainings have increased so much. Um, in Udemy, apparently it went up by one, Udemy, which is an online uh, learning portal. Um, purchases of stress management uh, trainings went up by 1,300%. Uh, since the start of COVID, for example. So there's definitely a market, there's definitely demand for those kinds of trainings, for example. So whatever, you know, that you feel drawn towards, and if you are drawn towards, I know that a lot of people who are, who are coaches and healers, etc., follow me. And if you are one of those, you know, think about what do I need to do in order to make this work, to make this successful? What do I need to, what quality do I need to um, get more to embody? What do I need to get better at? It's often confidence, patience, resilience, um, skills, learning better skills, things like showing up on camera and being able to, to share that, things like that. So think about what is it that you need to develop inside yourself so write that down because that is all part of your future vision that's all part of what you are working towards remember at the start i mentioned that you've got to get super crystal clear about where you want to go because you can't get there unless you're very very clear so that's what you're doing now and i hope that what i'm sharing with you is giving you some ideas to think about yes that's what i want no, I don't want to leave my job. I want to become uh, more Zen, the most Zen person in this workplace. Viktor Frankl, I, I will, if, if that's a decision you're making, then um, Man's Search for Meaning is a book by Viktor Frankl, who's just an Auschwitz survivor. He was in some other concentration camps too, but his uh, book is mainly based in Auschwitz. And he says that when all other freedoms are taken away from you, the final freedom, you, your mind and how you choose to think and your perspective, that cannot be stolen from you. That cannot be taken away from you ever. So maybe it's a good book to read if you're deciding that you want to because you are grateful for and appreciate the safety and security of your job, or you actually like the job itself, but not colleagues or something like that. Then you say, okay, how can I work on myself so that I'm not affected by other people in my workplace? Because but we have to take responsibility of how we react. You know, people can say things to us, but we can't blame them. Well, you can, but it's very disempowering. You can't blame them for how you feel because another person, they might say it too, and they're not affected by it. It will only affect you if on some level you believe it. Otherwise, you know, if somebody came up to you and said, well, you know, the fact that you have two noses is just, you know, I don't like you because of that. Well, obviously you would think they were, a looney tune because you don't have two noses right <laughs> you don't believe it that you have two noses but if they say to you well you know you know the the suggestions that you're making in meetings are just completely um 
irrelevant and unhelpful or something. And on some level you think, oh my God, wow, it's true that I did say that, or, or they say something about your reactions or something. If you on some level believe it, then it might be time to look inside and say, okay, well, I'll, I'll take on board whatever aspect of that I believe, or if you don't believe it, then you know it's not going to trigger you. It's only going to trigger you if there's some truth in it. So see them as a teacher in disguise for you. Uh, guiding you towards where there is an area for growth and development. So there's always opportunity for growth. You don't need to leave your current situation in order to experience that. And, you know, sometimes that is definitely the best decision. And um, yeah, I've had many clients who have done that, myself included, who've decided to step out on my own and create something that I'm really passionate about, really excited about, and to monetize it. And, um, you know, that's a, uh, it's another, it's the journey that I, where possible, I really encourage people to do because when you're living your purpose and your true purpose and, and passion, um, then you're living a life of alignment, alignment. It's like the train is going on the right track. But if you are doing something that you really don't enjoy doing, you know, if you're like paper pushing, instead of maybe you joined an organization to have a great impact in, in the world and make a difference, but actually all you're doing is just moving papers from left to right and not really having an impact and you feel soul destroyed about that, that, that affects our health, that affects our physical health, our mental health. And maybe on, the de on your deathbed, you might say, why didn't I just you know, step out and and create something myself. The reason we we don't is fear, right? But um, that's why I am the leap catalyst because you know, deciding yes, I'm going to jump, I'm going to leap, I'm going to make that change, and, um, and then following through with that. If you have very strong structure, uh, very good guidance, and obviously, if there's a market for whatever you want to do, then you will succeed with resilience and the right mindset. Um, so don't be afraid don't be afraid life's too short to um end up on your deathbed with regrets don't have any regrets okay so i hope that was really helpful to you you can listen to it again and you know add to it and think what do i really want what do i really want and you might even be confused right now you know with with the suggestions and confused about what what is it so i'd invite you to just get still and let's do that right now, even if you are clear and about what you want, you know, think, okay, what else, what else, what else, you know, what does my heart truly want? And what can be really helpful is to imagine yourself as that child again, you know, that confident child who really believed that you were going to achieve whatever it was, who didn't, who didn't realize that there was going to be so many fears and obstacles, you know, that fearless child inside of you. What is it that they want? What do you want to create? What impact do you want to have? What legacy you want, do you want to have? So, you know, what you can do at the end, uh, this is uh, nearly complete now, is, is just sit in silence and, and just contemplate, you know, and just see this time as a turning point. Even if you're clear on your journey, get clearer, take that time, you know. And I will challenge you also to say, if you are clear, how can you accelerate getting there? What do you need to do? What do you need to develop inside of you in order to accelerate getting there? And then just do it. Leap, leap, because life's too short. And a fantastic quote that I heard this morning from Winston Churchill is, success is marching from failure to failure without any loss of enthusiasm. I absolutely love that. And I believe that that is the way that I live. I have had a lot of failures, inverted commas, failures. I don't see any failure. The only failure I see is um, not doing anything or being being stuck and knowing you want to, to leap or move forward and, and you don't. I see that as a failure because it's you're being ruled. You're choosing to let fear rule you. And I have compassion. I don't mean that as a judgment too. I know that everybody's situation is different, but sometimes these excuses that we really, you know, we justify why we don't take those leaps. They're not as valid as we would have ourselves believe. <laughs> so um, please do reach out to me if you want me to challenge you on whatever um, reasons you have to validate why you can't live the life that you truly want to live. And that's what I wish for you. 
life, there's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be failures. There's always going to be um, things that arise that are unexpected. But if you choose to always trust and embrace with gratitude whatever is showing up for you and have a vision that excites you that you're growing towards and always you know when you um really ha when you have a vision that you really get behind and you're super excited about then you're going to be so focused on that you won't have time for anything like depression or um a feeling of lostness you're so focused and driven by your vision and and it's fun it's fun to go after it and and you know then to have to be celebrating the small the milestones along the way and the large ones but that is a, a lit up excited life and that is what i wish for you so i hope that this was helpful please do reach out if you would like my support or if you would like to join my dare to leap one year long program where i give uh, daily trainings there's 12 different themes, one theme per month, and you get a daily training related to that short bite-sized training. And you get a weekly coaching call where you can, a group coaching call where I support you um, in a group setting. So others can also benefit from whatever uh, roadblock you're experiencing or challenge that you would like guidance with. So if you are interested in joining, then um, please message me and I'll send you the link to sign up. Or if you're interested in one-to-one -one coaching with me, also reach out and I'll send you all the details. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this was useful, please share it with as many people as possible because it's, um, it's so underestimated and it's, you know, how, how important it is to have that clear vision and not be influenced by media and uh, pull distracted right and left by things on, on the outside. You want to have that vision clear inside your heart, inside you, and to go after it to create your best life. It's in your hands. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.